Hey everyone, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase. This is Data as Code, the future of enterprise data and analytics. This is also season two, episode two of our ongoing series with exciting partners from the AWS ecosystem who are here to talk with us about data and analytics. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Two guests join me, one, a CUBE alumni. Venkat Venkataramani is here, CEO and co-founder of Rockset. Good to see you again. And Doug Moore, VP of Cloud Platforms at Command Alcon. They're here to talk to me about how Command Alcon implemented real-time analytics in just days with Rockset. Guys, welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. Yeah, great to be here. Doug, give us a little bit of an of a overview of Command Alcon, what type of business you are, what your mission is, that good stuff. Yeah, great. I'll, I'll preface it by saying I've been in this industry for only three years. The 30 years prior, I was in financial services. So um, this was really exciting and eye-opening. It actually plays into the story of how we met Roxette. So that's why I wanted to preface that. Um, but Command Alcon is in the business, is in the what's called the heavy building materials industry. And I, I had never heard of it until I got here. But if you think about uh, large projects like building buildings, cities, roads, anything that requires concrete, asphalt or just really big trucks full of bulky materials. That's the heavy building materials industry. So for over 40 years, Command Alcon has been the North American leader in providing software to quarries and production facilities you know, to, uh, to help mine and load these materials and to produce them and then get them to the job site. So that's what our supply chain is, is from the quarry through the development of these materials and then out to, the, to a heavy building materials job site. Got it. And now, how historically in the past has the movement of construction materials been coordinated? What, what was that like before you guys came on the scene? You'll, you'll love this answer. So, um, because I, again, it's like a step back in time. When I, when I got here, the people told me that we were trying to come up with the platform that there are 27 industries studied globally. And our industry is second to last in terms of automation, which meant that literally everything is still being done with paper. And a lot of paper. So when one of the, let's, let's say material is developed, concrete asphalt is produced and then needs to get to the job site. They start by creating a five part printed ticket or delivery uh, description that again goes to multiple parties and ends up getting touched physically over 50 times for every delivery. And to give you some idea of what kind of scale that is, there are over 330 million of these type deliveries in North America every year. So it's really a lot of paper and a lot of manual work. So that was the state of really where we were. And obviously there are compelling reasons, certainly today, but even three, four, five years ago to automate that and digitize it. Wow, tremendous potential to go nowhere but up with the amount of paper, the lack of, yeah. of automation. So, so um, you guys, Command Alcon built a platform, a, a cloud software construction, construction software platform. Talk to me about that, why you built it, what was the compelling event? I mean, I think you've kind of already explained the compelling event of all the paper, but give us a little right. bit more context. Yeah, that was the original. And then we'll get into what happened two years ago, which made it even more compelling. But uh, essentially with everything on, on premises, there's really a huge amount of inefficiency. So, you know, people have heard the enormous numbers that it takes to build a, a highway or a really large construction project. And a lot of that is tied up in these inefficiencies. So we felt like with our significant presence in this market, that if we could figure out how to automate getting this data into the cloud, so that at least the partners in the supply chain could begin sharing information that's not on paper, uh, a little bit closer to real time, that we could make a significant impact on everything from the time it takes to do a project to even the amount of uh, carbon dioxide that's emitted, for example, from trucks running around and being delayed and not being coordinated well. So you built the Connects platform. You started on Amazon, DynamoDB, and ran into some performance challenges. Talk to us about some of those performance bottlenecks and how you found Vencat and Rockset. So uh, from the beginning, we were fortunate. You know, if you start building a cloud three years ago, you're, you have a, a lot of opportunity to use some of the, what we call more fully managed or serverless offerings from Amazon. And all the cloud vendors have them, but Amazon is the one we're most familiar with. Uh, throughout uh, the past 10 years. So we went uh, head first into saying, we're going to do everything we can to not manage infrastructure ourselves so we can really focus on solving this problem efficiently. And it paid off great. Uh, and so we chose Dynamo as our primary database and it still was a great decision. We have obviously hundreds of millions or billions of these data points in Dynamo. And it's great from a transactional perspective, but at some point you need to get the data back out 
And what plays into the story of the beginning when I came here with no background basically in this industry is that, and as did most of the other people on my team, we weren't really sure what questions were going to be asked of the data. And that's super, super important with a NoSQL database like Dynamo. You, you sort of have to know in advance what those usage patterns are going to be and what people are going to want to get back out of it. And that's what really began to, to strain us on, on both performance and just availability of information. Got it. Venkat, let's bring you into the conversation. Talk to me about some of the challenges that Doug articulated, the, you know, this industry with such little automation, so much paper. Are you finding that still out there for, in quite a few industries that really have nowhere to go but up? I think that's a very good point. You know, we talk about digital transformation 2.0 as like this abstract thing. And then, and then you meet like disruptors and innovators like Doug and you realize how much impact, you know, it has on the real world. But now it's not just about disrupting, uh, you know, you know, and digitizing all of these records, but doing it at a faster pace than ever before, uh, right? I think this is really what digital uh, transformation in the cloud really enables you to do that, you know, a small team in a, you know, with a very, very big mission and responsibility, like what Doug and team have been, uh, you know, shepherding here, um, they are able to move very, very, very fast, uh, you know, to be able to kind of accelerate this. And, and they're not only on the forefront of digitizing and uh, transforming a very, very big, you know, paper heavy kind of process, but, but real time analytics and real time reporting is a requirement, right? Nobody's wondering what is my supply chain three days ago? You know, are my, you know, you know, one of the most important thing in, you know, heavy construction is to keep uh, running on a schedule. If you fall behind, there's no way to catch up because there's so many things uh, that, that falls apart. Now, how do you make sure you don't fall behind, you know, real-time analytics and real-time reporting on how many trucks are, are supposed to be delivered today, you know, halfway through the day, are they on track? Are they getting behind? And, and all of those things is not just able to manage the data, but also be able to get reporting and analytics on that is an extremely important aspect of this. So this is like a combination of digital transformation happening in the cloud in real time and real time analytics being in the, at the forefront of it. And so we're very, very happy to partner with, uh, with, with you know, digital disruptors like Doug and his team uh, to be part of this movement. Doug, as Venkat mentioned, access to real time data is a requirement. That is just yeah. a simple truth these days. I'm just curious, compelling event wise, was COVID an accelerator? Because we, we all know of the supply chain challenges that we're all facing in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Was that part of a compelling event that had you guys go and say, we want to do DynamoDB plus Rockset? Yeah, that, that is a fantastic question. In fact, uh, more so than you can imagine. So anytime you come into an industry and you're going to try to completely change or revolutionize the way it operates, it takes a long time to get the message out, sometimes years. I remember in insurance, it took almost 10 years really to get that message out and get great adoption. Uh, and then COVID came along. And when COVID came along, uh, we all of a sudden had a situation where drivers and the foreman on the job site didn't want to exchange the paperwork. Uh, I heard one story of a driver taping the ticket for signature to the foreman on a broomstick and putting it out his window so that he didn't get too close. It really was that dramatic. And again, this is the early days and no one really has any idea what's happening. And we're all working from home. So we launched, uh, we saw that as an opportunity to really help people solve that problem and understand more what this transformation would mean in the long term. So we launched internally what we call Project Lemonade, obviously from, you know, make lemonade out of lemons. Is that the situation that we were in? And we immediately uh, made some enhancements to a mobile app and then launched that to the field so that basically there's a, now a digital acceptance capability where the driver can just stay in the vehicle and the foreman can be anywhere look at the materials, say it's acceptable for delivery, you can go from there. So yeah, it made a, it, it, it actually immediately caused many of our customers, hundreds to begin to want to push their data to the cloud for that reason, just to take advantage of that one capability. Project Lemonade, sounds like it's made a lot of lemonade out of a lot of lemons. Can you comment, Doug, on kind of the, the larger trend of real-time analytics and logistics? Yeah, obviously, and, and this is something I didn't think about much either, not knowing anything about concrete other than it was in my driveway before I got here. And that it's a, it's a perishable product. And, and it, you've got that basically no more than about an hour and a half from the time you mix it, put it in the drum and get it to the job site and pour it. And then the next one has to come behind it. And I remember a, um, the, the trend is that uh, we, we can't really do that on paper anymore and stay on top of what has to be done when we get into the field. So uh, a foreman, I recall saying uh, that 
when you're in the field waiting on delivery, that you and you have people standing around and preparing the site, ready to make a pour, that two minutes is an eternity. And so, you know, real time is always a, a controversial word because it's, it means something different to anyone. But that gave it real, you know, real clarity to me what it really meant to have real time analytics on how are we doing and where are my vehicles and how is this job performing today. And I think that a lot of people are still trying to figure out how to do that. And fortunately, we found a great tool set that's allowing us to do that at scale. Um, thankfully, you know, for uh, Roxette primarily. Then, Kat, talk about it from your perspective, the larger trend of real-time analytics, not just in logistics, but in other key industries. Yeah, I think um, I think we're seeing this across the board. I, I think, you know, whether, you know, even... Um, we, we see a huge trend even within an enterprise, uh, different teams from the marketing team, to the support teams, uh, to more and more business operations team, to the security team, uh, you know, really moving uh, more and more of their use cases from batch to real time. So we see this, uh, you know, the, the industries that are the innovators and the pioneers here are the ones for whom real time is a requirement, uh, like Doug and his team here, where, you know, if, if it is old news, it's it's no news, it's, it's not, it's useless, right? Um, but I think even within, uh, you know, across all industries, whether it is, you know, gaming, uh, whether it is, um, you know, uh, fintech, uh, you know, buy now, pay later companies, e-learning platforms. So across, you know, ed tech and, you know, so many different platforms, there is, there is always this need uh, for business operations. Some, you know, certain aspects, certain teams within uh, large organizations to, to, you know, have to, you know, tell me how to win the game and not like, you know, play Monday morning quarterback after the game is over. Right. Doug, let's go back to you. I'm curious with Connex, have you been able to scale the platform since you integrated with Rockset? Talk to us about some of the outcomes that you've achieved so far. Yeah, we 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 have, and and of course we knew when we made our database selection with, with Dynamo that it it really doesn't have a top end in terms of how much information that we can throw at it. But that's very very challenging when it comes to using that information for reporting. But we found the same thing as we've scaled the analytics side. Uh, with our uh, rock set indexing and searching of that database. So the scale in terms of the number of customers and the amount of data we've been able to take on has been, um, has been not been a problem. And, and honestly, for the first time in my career, I can say that we've always had to add people every time we add a certain number of customers. And that has absolutely not been the case with this platform. Well, and I imagine the what team is- that you do have is far more, sorry, Ben Kat, far more um, strategic and able to focus on bigger projects. It, it is, and you'd be amazed at, it. I mean, Venkat hit on a couple of points that it's, in terms of the adoption of analytics, what we found is that we're as big a customer of this analytic engine as our customers are, because our marketing team and our sales team are always coming to us, well, how many customers are doing this? How many partners are connected in this way? Which feature flags are turned on in the platform? Uh, and the way this works is all data that we push into the platform is automatically just indexed and ready for reporting and analytics. So we really, it's no additional add of work you know, to answer these questions, which has really been phenomenal. I think the thing that I want to add here is uh, the speed at which they were able to build a, a scalable solution and also how little, uh, you know, operational and administrative overhead that it has cost to their teams, right? I think, um, you know, this is again, real-time analytics, if you go and ask 100 people, you know, do you want fast analytics on real-time data or slow analytics on stale data? People, you know, no one, no one would say, give me slow and stale. So, so I think it goes back to again our fundamental thesis that you have to remove all the cost and complexity barriers for real-time analytics to be the new default, right? Uh, today, companies try to get away with batch, and 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 the pioneers and the innovators are forced to solve, I know, kind of like address some of these uh, real-time analytics challenges. I think with a platform like uh, the real-time analytics platform like Rockset, you, we can we want to completely flip it on its head. You know, you can do everything in real time, and there may be some extreme situations where you're ha- you're dealing with like you know hundreds of petabytes of data, and you just need an analyst to generate like you know quarterly reports out of that. Go ahead and use some you know really really good batch based system, but you should be able to get anything and everything you want without additional cost or complexity. Uh, you know, in in real time. That is really the vision. That is what we are really enabling here. Ben, can I want to also get your perspective and Doug, I'd like your perspective on this as well, but that is the role of cloud native and serverless technologies in digital disruption. Ben, what do you see there? Yeah, I think um, it's, it's huge. I think, you know, you know, you, you know, again and again, every customer, you know, and we meet, uh, you know, Command Alcon and, and, and Doug and his team is a great example of this. 
where they really want to spend as much time and energies and calories that they have to you know help their business right like what 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 are we accomplishing trying to accomplish as a business how do we enable how do we build better products how do we grow revenue how do we eliminate risk uh, that is inherent in the business and that is really where they want to spend all of their energy is not trying to like you know install some back end software administer it build edl pipelines and and so on and so forth and so uh, you know doing serverless on the compute side of the things like aws lambdas and what have you and you know it's 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 a very important innovation but that isn't that doesn't complete the story or your data stack also have to become serverless and and that is really the vision with rockset that your entire real time analytics stack can be you know operating and managing it could be as simple as managing a serverless stack for your for your compute environments uh, like your api servers and what have you and so so i think that is going to be a that is for here to stay this is a path towards simplicity and simplicity scales really really well right complexity will always be the killer that will limit how far you know you can use this uh, solution and and how uh, you know how many problems can you solve with that solution so simplicity is a very very important aspect here and serverless helps you uh, you know deliver that and Doug, that's your great. thoughts on cloud native and serverless in yeah, that, terms of digital point. disruption. Great point. And there are two parts to the scalability part. The second one is the one that's uh, more subtle unless you're in charge of the budget. And that is that we know with enough effort and enough money that uh, you can make almost any technology scale, whether it's multiple copies of it, you know, you, it, it may take a long time to get there, but you can get there with most technologies. But what is least scalable, at least that, that I, as I see it in this industry is the people. Everybody knows we have a talent shortage and these other ways of getting the real-time analytics and scaling infrastructure for compute and uh, database storage, uh, it, it really takes a highly skilled uh, set of resources. And the more your company grows, the more of those you need. And that is what we really can't find. And, and that's actually what drove uh, our team in our, in our last industry to even go this way. We reached a point where our growth was limited by the people we could find. And so we really wanted to break out of that. So now we have the best of both, scalable, scalable people because we don't have to scale them and scalable technology. Excellent, the best of both worlds. Isn't that great when those two things come together? Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on theCUBE today, talking about what Rockset and Command Alcon are doing together, better together, what you're enabling from a, a supply chain digitization perspective. We appreciate your insights. Great, thank you. Thanks Lisa, thanks for having us. My pleasure. For Doug Moore and Venkat Venkataramani, I'm Lisa Martin. Keep it right here for more coverage of theCUBE, your leader in high-tech event coverage.